Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic on a Saturday evening, uh, but importantly the 30th of the month, so tomorrow is the first of a new month, we will be publishing a new Matrian, Matrian Pay Reward, a Patreon May Reward uh, for people to have a go at. Um, it's going to be the most approachable one we've put up for a long time and do give it a go in normal mode uh, when it comes out tomorrow at 4pm. It's Join us on Patreon if you haven't already. This one's worth doing. It's a sort of equal sum line group of puzzles. I think you will enjoy it. Um, now, that is going on there. Now, this puzzle is uh, called Vikna, which is Windows. You may be wondering what language that is in. Well, it is in Ukrainian. This has come from uh, Yar, no, whose real first name is Yaroslav and who has been communicating with us from uh, war-torn Ukraine in the last few weeks and we definitely wish Yaroslav well. Shocking news stories out of the country every day basically and I really hope that um, the Russians can cease their attacks, the Russian government. Um, anyway, let's hope for something better for that country soon but Yaroslav's been sending us some fabulous puzzles, so thanks very much to him for keeping going. It's fantastic. We are delighted to feature them, not just because he's Ukrainian, but because they're great puzzles, and uh, I'm certainly expecting that to be the case again. Now, um, we'll look at the puzzles rules in a minute. I've mentioned Patreon. Um, we've also got loads of things going on, as always. If you check the... Um, the URLs in the description field under the grid, you can find your way to all our apps, to send Sudoku Pad, the Discord server, etc. But this puzzle, now, normal Sudoku rules do not apply because we have um, an irregular shaped puzzle. So we don't have, well, we do have some three by three boxes, but they're in the sort of window positions, hence the name of the puzzles. Um, so those contain the digits one to nine each, as do the other oddly but symmetrically shaped regions. Um, and, ah, oh, there's a knight's move constraint. This is very important. Glad I haven't forgotten to read it or mention it. So no two digits, a knight's move, uh, no two cells a knight's move apart can contain the same digit. And that's going to matter throughout. Uh, along thermometers, Digits increase from the bulb. Ooh, this is tempting. Simon the other day said even Mark wouldn't pencil mark a three cell thermometer. Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> um, now, these are German whisper lines, these tiny little green lines. So adjacent digits on a line must have a difference of five or more. So you could have a one and six there, but you couldn't have a one and five because the difference wouldn't be enough. Orange lines, there's these sort of tiny palindromes. They're joining identical digits. Um, and the grey squares are even digits. So it's a phenomenally symmetrical puzzle, this. So obviously these two little thermos disambiguate it, because otherwise you could rotate it around and it would, it would clearly still be the same. Um, fascinating. So do give it a go on the link under the video. I have no idea how hard this is going to play. Yaroslav's a really interesting constructor, so we will see. Um, no idea, but let's just plunge in and let's get cracking. Um, how do we get cracking here? Let's look at the even cells, because there are only four even digits in every row, column, and box. Ah, four of these are in the same region, this plus shaped central region. So one each of those is two, four, six, and eight. Now they're all on orange palindrome lines. So those are all, that's another set of two, four, six, eight that I've got highlighted. One of the, one of these is a four and one's a six. So on the German whispers, the four must be next to a one and the, sorry, the four must be next to a nine and the six next to a one. Oh, look, in the central box, ah, I didn't notice this, in this central region, every cell is either an even digit or on a German whisper line. In fact, every cell is on a German whisper line except this one. So that's where five goes. That is the only digit that can never be on a German whisper line because the digit it would be next to 
would have to be less than one or more than nine, and that doesn't apply in Sudoku. So this in this central region is a set of the digits one to nine. Ah, so on the palindromes, we get another set of one to nine. This is so symmetrical and unshakably samey. Right, now, okay, now I've forgotten already. The knights move. Okay, let's color things. So these, no, let's start with the even digits. These two are the same digit. Yes. Yes, remember that these four digits are different. That is a set of the digits two, four, six, and eight, because they're all in the central plus shape. Therefore, this digit, which is the same as that, is different from blue. And that means I know where this region has its blue digit. Not here or here by Sudoku, not here by the knight's move, and not here because that digit is a different colour to that one. And that's the same as that one. So it must be here, the blue digit. And that's going to apply on all of these evens. If we make that purple, they're the same. And then it can't be there because that's a different colour can't be there because of the knight's move, so that's purple. So let's make this one green, and it's going to have to be here because it can't be here because of the knight's move, and that's a different colour. Yes, let's make this yellow. Those are the same, and that's going to be where... Ah, oh, now we can see that it can't be here by because we've coloured that cell a different colour. So the even digits are blue, green, yellow, and purple. Now, do we know any more? Ah, well, maybe I can use the Windoku rule that I mentioned yesterday. No, maybe I can't yet. OK, let, let's pick one. Let's start with blue again. Where are the other blue digits going? We've got three of them. Oh, no, hang on. Let's think about these digits. I bet this is going to be another set of the even digits, one each. Now, how can we establish that? This one can't be blue or yellow. Oh, no. If that... Hmm. I was going to say, if that was green, what's that? But that becomes yellow. That becomes blue and that becomes green. So that is possible. So what if this is purple? Is that more of a problem? Then that becomes blue, that becomes yellow, and that becomes green. I don't think there's a problem either way around. Ah, okay. Am I not going to get any more progress? Maybe I should look at the odd digits. But they're not so easy to place in the windows they're looking at. OK, I'm going to stay with the even digits. Let's try and deduce something else out about blue. Ah. Oh. No, I don't know. I was wondering where blue goes in the central column. Just seeing that that cell reaches that one by knight's move. I don't know. Sorry, I'm going to have to think about this a bit now. Green. Oh no, maybe these evens again. I'm sure this, this is clearly going to be a colouring puzzle. It, it really feels like it going to probably colour the whole grid and then maybe use the thermos to disambiguate somehow. But that's jumping ahead. Let's, let's not do that yet. Um, okay, come on. Think, Mark, what can we get done here? Blue, blue, blue. I want to say electric blue, but I'm not David Bowie. Um, I don't know. This is green or yellow. Ah! Oh. 
Okay, interesting. Right. Yes, okay, this is not green. This is beautiful, actually. Imagine this was green. Oh, that's amazing. Look, it sees all these cells. Whatever this is, it sees those two by night's move, those two because they're in the same region. We know it's not this one. So that green sees all of those cells. That green sees all of those. And it sees that cell. So if that was green, there wouldn't be anywhere to put green in row eight. That's amazing. So that's not green, and we know it's not blue or purple. So that is yellow being even. Now, and this was actually how I first spotted this, I noticed that this cell sees all of those. Now we know where yellow goes in column eight. It can't go in any of those because of that one. It can't go in those two because of that one, if you like, or those two. So it goes here on the thermo. Now, what about yellow in this final column? Can't be in any of those cells because of the yellows we've got. This one sees all of those. So yellow in the final column is in one of those two. Now I'm thinking about using the, the window rule that I mentioned yesterday, but and it does still apply. Okay, the window rule I'm talking about is that in a Windows puzzle, that's a set of the digits one to nine, that's another one. So the third set of the digits one to nine in columns seven, six, seven, and eight is in those three cells. That must always be a set of the digits one to nine. And in the grid, there's another one there. There's another set of one to nine there by the same logic, another one there, and then a final one in these cells. And we've just found that one yellow goes into one of those two that are in that group of um, sort of lattice junction cells. Now, I don't know if that matters. It probably doesn't, actually. Um, ah, now, if this was yellow, then this region would only have one cell left that could be yellow. It would be there then this region would have to have yellow there. And then you'd get a yellow there. So that does work. What about if that was yellow? Oh, then this region on the left would have to have yellow there. This region would have to have yellow there. And then, what about this region? Yes, yellow there. Okay, so both are possible. So actually, let's forget yellow for the moment. If we've got yellow there, though, look, this now sees yellow, purple, and green. So that's blue. This sees blue, green, and yellow. So that's purple. I knew these corners, or sorry, the window centers would be a set of the even digits, and they are. Oh, and I must be able to put in this equivalent. If I can just work out how I got that. <laughs> um, yes, look, in this column, where does purple go? It can't go in any of those cells because of that one or those because of that one. So that's purple. So blue is looking at those cells from there, those cells from there. Blue in row eight is there. And green in this row those ones are all seen by that. Those two are seen by that. That's green on another thermo end. Ah, maybe we can... Do green and yellow now have to be six? Well, green and yellow now can't be two because they're both in third positions on thermos. I don't know, maybe that's probably not the way to do it. Let's keep thinking about these colors. So we've got blue. Yeah, I need to make some more progress. Oh, let's think about column or row five, column five. We've got no blue or green in column five at the moment. Blue can't go there and green can't go there by Knight's... Oh, actually by Ordinary Sudoku in both cases. Um, so green is in one of these cells. 
Oh, that's very interesting. That's going to mean green has to be here. Now, by the the windoku rule I was mentioning, these can only have one green in. And in the central column... Oh, no. I Sorry, I, my logic is wrong because it couldn't go there. For some reason, I thought it wasn't going there and had to be in one of those two. No, okay, sorry, forget that. Let's... Let's think again about the middle column. So green could be in any of those places. Now, ooh, that's interesting. If it was there, they'd, in the bottom row, there'd be a green in one of those two. They both see this cell, so that couldn't be green. Green in this window would be here. Oh, yeah. Uh, then the green in column 8 would have to be specifically at the bottom, so that would be green. That's all right. And the green in the final column would be up here. So that does work. Bother. Um, I was hoping to prove that wasn't green, although... No, I don't know quite how I was meant to get there. Right, blue in the bottom row. Look, blue in... Maybe I did do this earlier. Blue in the bottom row can't be there because they're in the same region as that. Can't be there because of those two. Can't be in any of these three because of that one. So blue in the bottom row is in one of these two. And that's using up the blue in the junction cells. I suppose that's equivalent to this yellow here. So that can't be blue. But that can be. Ah, this isn't getting it done. Okay, maybe it is time to colour an odd digit. Is it time? Probably is. Let's colour this one orange. See if we get anything from that. Um, orange in this box is in one of those two. It doesn't feel like that does anything. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with the even digits. Maybe I need to use these numbers now. We've got 4, 6, or 8 in yellow. Green is also 4, 6, or 8. Um, it's not helpful. Oh, maybe... No, I don't know. I was going to say maybe if two had to be on the thermo and can't be there. I, d I don't know how to use that. No, I need to think again. I need to find some other row or column that's under enormous pressure and I haven't quite realised it yet. So, those can't be blue by ordinary Sudoku. So one of those three is blue. That's quite a range. None of those are blue. So blue in this region is in one of those three. Ah. They all see this cell. So that can't be blue. So now blue in this region, which couldn't be in any of those, also can't be there is either here or here. Um, and they both see that cell, which now can't be blue. So now in the top row, those can't be blue and those can't be blue. So in this shape, ah, and those two can't be blue. Ah, so blue has to be in one of these two cells. Yes, that is right. Okay, so let's just go through that again. First of all, in this shape, where is blue? Well, given what we have of blue already, not in any of those cells and not in that green cell. So it's in one of those three. Now they all see this cell here. 
all of those three see that cell by either straightforward or knight's move. So that's not blue. So blue's in one of those two. They both see that cell, which can't be blue. This is fascinating. We also know that that can't be blue. All of those can't be blue because of the blues further down the grid. So blue is now in one of those two in that shape. Has to be. That means it's not here in the bottom row. And that means in the bottom row it is here in the corner. That's blue in the corner. Watching you kiss her. Dancing on its own. So, blue in... Right, blue in this shape is in one of those two cells. Yeah, blue in this shape has been ruled out of column one. So it's in one of those two cells. And we know it can't be in that one from that blue. So that's blue on the bulb. This is now not blue. So is that not blue? This becomes blue in its region. And this is blue as well in its region. And all our blues are done. That's all the blues. Right, we must be able to do exactly the same routine, except I'm going to have to work it out again. Okay, in... How do we start? I'm going to end up with yellow in this shape. Now, yellow in this shape can't be in that T already. Now, what do we do? The possibilities for yellow in... We're going to rule out that cell by knowing that yellow's in one of those three. How do I do that? can't remember. I can't, re I can't relate it to this one. This was definitely right. Okay, let me let me just think more clearly. Um, yeah, yellow in this region can't be in those cells by Sudoku. Okay, if yellow was there, yellow in this bottom region, yes, yellow in the bottom region would have no possible place because that cell sees those two and those yellows see all of those and that. So, right. Yes, that's right. So yellow in this region already is restricted out of all of those. Yellow must be in one of those two cells. They both see this one just by ordinary Sudoku. It doesn't take any knight's move. So now yellow in this region is in one of those two. They both see this cell. So yellow in this region now has to be in one of those two. This is weird. And that stops being yellow. This must be yellow. That stops this being yellow um, and makes this in the region yellow. That rules those two out. This becomes yellow, does it? No, this one becomes yellow, definitely. I think this one does as well. Yeah, and that's all the yellows. Right, so this symmetrical pattern is going to repeat everywhere, and I'm just going to put it in. I've done blue and yellow. Um, right, so it points the three, then down, then up. And then green is going to have to be in this corner as a result. That's exactly the same pattern. That's going to put green in here in this shape. That's going to put green in this column, not in those cells or there. Green must be here. Actually, this does get a bit easier when um, cells are colored with other colors. So I think that's... Now, I've got a green in the central column still to do. There it is. Right. So that's all the greens and the purples. Now... How does it work in the purples? Um, those can't be purple. No, that's not what to do. These can't be purple in column eight. So one of those two is purple. These can't be purple. And if those two involve a purple, and that means purple can't be here, it also can't be here. Right, so one of these two is definitely purple. 
Yeah, one of those two is purple. So that's not purple. Those two can't be because of that. Those two can't be. Purple in column one is there. That puts purple in this box there. That rules purple out of those two. And we've purplified the whole thing. Have we? No, I've got another purple in this row. There it is. Okay, so that's all the purples. Right, and now these, these cheeky thermos, which I did not pencil mark fully, Simon, are all even digits. And in fact, blue is less than purple, purple is less than green, green is less than yellow. So we know what all the even digits are. That's how we do this. Two, four, six, four, six, eight, bingo. All the yellows are eight. All the greens are six, thanks to Sven's marvelous software. I can just click onto the colors and they all light up and I can fill in the numbers. Purple are four and blue is two. And that's all the even digits in the puzzle done, just like that. Right. Now, how are we going to disambiguate the odds if we can't use the thermos? German whispers. Right, six is next to one on a German whisper. So they're ones. Four is next to nine. Oh, they're not opposite each other. Interesting. Two now must be next to seven and eight next to three. Now we have to propagate these around the grid somehow. And we haven't got many odd digits here at all. So there's a one in one of those two in this window. That one in column one sees all of those cells. So there's a one in one of those two. And there must be a one in one of these. And that's the three ones in rows six, seven, and eight. The one in row nine is down here. The one in row one is up here. I'm not really getting this done, actually, but I'm sure one of these digits... I mean, this has to be how it works. Um, okay, I've got a three nine pair at the end of column, at the end of row five, a one seven pair at the end of row column five. So that's yet another group of four different cells. Maybe I need to think about fives. No, I don't think so. Fives are not being helpful. Right, there's a nine in one of those and a nine in one of those. Again, because that nine sees all those three in the bottom row and those two see both of those. Now, maybe I just need to work out which one will work. If that's a nine, this can't be, so that is. Then you get a nine here. Oh, I see, one of these two is definitely a nine. So that one isn't. And I say that because either that is a nine or that's a nine, which stops that being a nine and forces that to be. So one of them ends up being a nine. So that can't be a nine. So nine in this box is in one of those three. That's not really very helpful. Um, must be a nine in one of these three. Hmm, okay, I'm really not seeing how to do this at the moment. Or that it even can be done. It just feels like it can't be. But I, obviously I'm missing something because Yaroslav is smart. So, what am I missing here? Ah, those two can't be a one because that sees them both. So in this row, one of those two is a one. And that means this can't be a one. And we also worked out it couldn't be a nine. And it can't be a three. And it can't be a seven. Good grief, it's a five. Wow. Okay, that's a complicated step, I think. So, what does that see? Well, only that and that. But the same is going to work everywhere else, isn't it? So, now, how does this... How does this translate? So what I did was I noticed neither of those could be a one. Yes, neither of these can be a nine because of that one. So nine in the column is in one of those two cells. 
they both see this cell, which also sees one and three. Have I gone too far with this one? Why should I know that this can't be seven at this point? How do I know this can't be seven? Maybe I do. That, that seven sees those three cells. So there's a seven here. Um, those two see those. So there's a seven here. Now I worked out this couldn't be nine because I had it in a group of cells here. So seven must be able to be grouped in those. Why is that not a seven? <laughs> What's the reason that I came up with? Over here, it worked for nines. Ah, yes, I had those nines. Right, that sees that cell. So one of those two is a seven. Yes, so whether seven is here or here, one of these two is a seven. That does work, so that's not a seven. And now that we know it's not a nine, because that's seen by both of those, it must be a five again. And that's going to work here. This is going to be a five. It's a similar sort of thing. It's a, it's a slightly complicated thing, but we know there's a three up there, because that three sees all of those. We know there's a three here, because that three sees that cell. Those positions mean there must be a three in one of those two, and this one now becomes... Well, I'm going to say five or seven, but there's a reason it can't be seven that I cannot remember. Why can't it be seven? Oh, why am I? Surely three was the harder thing to work out. It couldn't be. Um... Oh, goodness. Okay. I, I can't... It's weird how I can't translate this same logic just by rotating the grid and looking at it again in my mind. So I've done this with nines. I sort of did it with sevens there. I've done it with threes there. Ones here. So one of those has to be a one. So this is now three or five. But there's a reason it can't be three. And what is that reason? Ah, yes, there is a simple reason. That three sees that cell. So one of these two is a three. And one of them's a nine, actually. So that's a three nine pair, because we know one of them's a nine, because nine there forces a nine into that, because it can't be there. Yes, so that is actually a three nine pair. So that's a one. This doesn't necessarily become a one. One's in one of those two cells. That has made this one a seven. That makes this one a one. That pair both see that cell, which is a five. That one sees that cell, and that means one in this row is now here. Let's get rid of the pencil mark. That's not a one. Do we know it's not a three or a five? Not necessarily yet. We've got a seven nine pair in those two. There might be a way to disambiguate that, and I can't see it immediately. Ugh, um, that's not a five, so it's seven or nine. This should, this should have fallen apart, but I have been unable to make it fall apart. There's a one in one of those two because of this configuration, so that's three or seven. If seven or nine, it really isn't giving up, is it? Um, and well done, the puzzle for not. It is, it is confusing me quite badly. It's a very clever construction. Right, seven here sees that cell. So seven's in one of those two. That means it's in one of these two in this box. Um, that doesn't 
help by ruling it out there. Now this is a 3-9 pair. Does that do anything? The knight's move is very helpful for a bit, but not... Oh, one in this column. Yes, that's very straightforward. In it goes. Not there. So now this is a 7-9 pair, definitely. So this is a 1-3 pair. That's not a 9. Now we can place 9 in this box. That gives us a 3 at the bottom. Um, this is not 1, of course. 5 or 9. Surely we can use these more. Five and nine. Can I tell which one of those isn't five or nine? I don't think so. Three, one. This is five or seven because it can see a nine. And a three. This is, I don't know, five. Ah, this is not nine. Right, that nine sees both those cells. So nine in the bottom row is here. Sorry if I've been very slow about things you could see at the bottom here, but it's just not always easy to pick these apart. Right, three and nine, they do go in because we've got a nine lower down. That's five or seven, a lovely deadly pattern forming here that's going to be resolved by a knight's move somewhere. Um, that can't be three anymore because of a knight's move from there, so that's three. Here we go now. This one is seven or nine. This is now a 1-3 pair. I keep expecting these to disambiguate and they keep disappointing me. Um, right, that 1-3 pair both sees that cell. So that can't be 3. So that's a 5. So this isn't. 5, that 5 sees those two. And that can't be a five because of that one. So five in the first row is there. Have we not done all the fives? No, we've still got this five, seven pair to disambiguate. I can't even see. It's going to be from there a cell reaches them. So irritating. Um, I'm sure you can see the, the, the simple move that I just can't pick out. But sorry, I'm just going to have to spot it myself, unfortunately. Um... Easier said than done. And it's all symmetrical, so it's just embarrassing. I've been able to spot the moves in one place, so I should have been able to commute that around the grid, and I have not done so quite blatantly. Uh, one, three pair. Uh, I don't know. Nine, seven pair. Oh, come on. Three is in one of those cells. No. It's something here, isn't it? That's one. Of, what is this? This is one, three, or seven. And this, seven or nine. So. There's a one in one of those two. How is this not blindingly obvious. Why can I not see the cell that resolves this all? Probably is only one now, but something something does this instantly. Oh, come on, Mark. Two that are close together somewhere. So if that was a three, that would be a three. That would be a three. That would be a three. Oh, goodness gracious. Something just does this. And I can't see it. What finishes the puzzle? Just skip ahead to the end and enjoy watching me be happy. Because I'm not happy at the moment. Come on. Seven, nine pair there. One of those is a seven. Now I'm sure that is a seven. So if instead that was a seven, we'd get a seven here. That would see this cell in the final column. Ah! No, we'd get a seven there. We'd get a seven there. 
then we'd have a pair in the box down here, in the two by two down here. Oh, this one can't be a seven for a, some very obvious reason. What is the obvious reason? Because this always has to be a five in this rotationally symmetrical position. Now, why? Why can't that be a seven? There is some blindingly obvious reason that I cannot see at the moment. If that was a seven, then we'd get seven there, 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 and that, oh look, seven is looking at that cell. It's that simple. Right, now I can be happy again. So three is looking at that cell, that's a one, this isn't a one and it's not a three, so that's a seven. There we go. Nine, three, nine, seven. That's looking up here. Nine, seven. The nine fixes that. And now we're just going to have the deadly pattern left. And of course, there is a seven looking into it there. Five, seven, five, seven. And there we go. That took longer than it needed to, but it's fiendishly clever. It's beautifully symmetrical. It's a lovely colouring puzzle based on the window theme. Absolute elegance from start to finish, apart from my soul. But I really enjoyed that. Thank you so much to Yaroslav and uh, good luck to you. And thanks for sending it. Hope to see you guys soon on the channel. Bye for now.